Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and today I am bringing you another nation guide in Fire and Maneuver. For today, we are going to be taking a look at the elite nation of the United Kingdom. This is a very interesting faction. It is easily the most expensive faction that you have in the entire game. Its units are so expensive that it is going to be outnumbered against pretty much anybody else. However, the big benefit of this is that they all have range drill. Practically every unit within the British roster is kicking range drill, making them very hard hitting and giving a nation the ranged capacity to pretty much beat anyone in a firefight. They're a very difficult nation to play. I would argue one of the hardest to play due to that sheer lack of numbers that the nation can really struggle with. But... Even regardless, this guide hopefully will give you some ideas on how to better utilize them. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. We're doing a nation guide for every single nation in the game. If you haven't already, I've done two new ones. One on the Tokugawa Shogunate and one on the Sacho Alliance alongside a French and a Prussian one. So check those out if you're interested. But now let's go jump into the early period where we can talk about the British and their roster. Within the early period, the British nation is well-rounded in its capacities. All of its tabs are actually some of the best in the entire game. Its infantry, as previously mentioned, is all range drill. They all have range drill, making them hit very hard at range. On top of that, Britain has an unlimited number of rifles, giving them a decisive ranged advantage, especially in the early period. Their cavalry is also well-rounded, the most notable thing being cavalry that has a lot of range drill and efficiency on it, making them fast-moving and also hitting very hard. And then this gets finished off with artillery that is some of the best in the game. Having a combination of efficiency and no cumbersome alongside three cohesion means that these artillery are actually very, very capable. To cover the units in specific, we start off with the line infantry. It's a pretty basic infantry unit, six health and four cohesion, and has range drill. It's overall your basic line unit, and for Britain, serves a nice purpose. They're durable and arguably the most cost-efficient unit you can really utilize in the British Army. But they are still a lot more expensive than other units. You also have Light Infantry. Light Infantry are essentially the same thing as Line, but they lose one cohesion and gain skirmishing. These guys are ones that I think are still quite useful. Although they have one less cohesion, skirmishing is a very powerful trait allowing them to move diagonally in open order. And because you're sitting in open order so much, these guys can be great for being a little nimble and hard to catch, just allowing you some flexibility in your line units. You also have the rifles, a light infantry that has similars to the light infantry, but rifles instead have rugged and less health. The rifles are overall quite squishy, but they are the only rugged troop available to the early British. And as such, these guys can serve important roles, either flanking or sitting in a tree line to snipe at the enemy. They can be surprisingly durable as well. You just have to make sure to utilize them carefully. If you're using them as frontline troops, they're going to die and they won't be that effective. They are also the cheapest infantry you can get in the early period, meaning that they can be used to help fill out your roster and give you some numbers before the things drag on, before costs get too high. But then we get into sort of the highlights of the British infantry, their heavy infantry. You have the Highlanders, which are range drilled, melee drill, 6 health, 5 cohesion infantry extremely durable units these guys are going to be some of just the best line infantry you can essentially get in the game strong in melee being able to deal high damage at range and the excellent stats makes them expensive but very very powerful anchors for a line but then we also get the foot guards a similar unit to the highlanders however instead of melee drill they have efficiency 
Foot guards are probably just the best infantry in the game, period. They are just the best infantry because heavy infantry with range drill and efficiency is extremely powerful. And unlike a lot of other units, there's no, there's nothing holding these guys back. They don't have extra perks raising their prices. They don't have negative perks making them weaker. They don't have limits on what weapons they can bring. And as such, they're just like the best part of like this type of unit just condensed down into the absolute strongest they can possibly be. They are extremely powerful. Then onto cavalry, you have your basic hussars. Overall, kind of underwhelming, although they are notably very cheap. And that low cost means you can actually squeeze a hussar or two into a build to help bulk up your numbers. Even at 100 points, roughly, or more or less, you're able to bring one of these, pretty much two of these, for the same cost as a line infantry, which is pretty notable. It means that you're able to bulk out your numbers quite nicely with them, which can be quite useful. Then you also have Lancers, essentially a shock version of the Hussars. You're paying a bit more for the price, but Britain doesn't have any other shock units. So if you're looking to get into melee and charge in with shock, this is the unit you're going to want to utilize. Then we get to the Light Dragoons. The Light Dragoons are a very interesting unit. With 4 health and 3 cohesion, they are quite squishy, but they have range drill, skirmishing, and efficiency. This makes them terrifying units. They are very fast moving, able to dismount and blast the enemy to pieces, and then can either skirmish away or remount and run away very quickly. They cost an arm and a leg, costing more than a basic line infantry while not having the range or the durability. However, that ability to threaten flanks and whatnot can make light dragoons a nightmare for the enemy to deal with if you use them safely and don't overcommit them into something that might get them killed but then we also have the dragoons the dragoons are a basic dragoon unit six health four cohesion with efficiency and range drill they're essentially a nice unit if you're looking for cheap efficiency range drill which these guys feel quite well Unless you're wanting to pay for the foot guards, Dragoons can fill a similar role. They, again, don't have the range of the rifled infantry, but they are able to move around more effectively due to how cavalry, heavy cavalry has that echelon formation, and also efficiency allows them to more quickly change to the formation they need to. They're overall well-rounded cavalry and can fit in as a decent unit if you have the funds to maybe replace a line infantry or something and then we get to the big heavy cavalry the dragoon guards efficiency range drill and melee drill combined with health with high health and five cohesion they are essentially a combination of highlanders and foot guards pushed together they are very very expensive they cost 300 points with a basic carbine and are one of the most expensive units within the British roster, but within this is a unit that can pretty much do anything you need. They can charge into melee thanks to high cohesion and melee drill, they can sit at range and shoot thanks to range drill, or they can do both thanks to efficiency allowing them to quickly switch between whatever is needed at the time. It's a very, very flexible unit, and the biggest downside is that it costs an arm and a leg to get. Then moving on to their artillery, their artillery pieces are actually pretty standard within the game. You have your basic three range artillery, your four range artillery, your four range howitzer. These all fit pretty standard units. However, the big thing is that they don't have cumbersome and instead they have efficiency. This gives them a high cost, but allows them to quickly act in ways that the enemy doesn't really normally have to deal with. Most notably, you can move your unit, change formation, and shoot in the same turn. This makes them arguably the most responsive artillery in the entire game. And of particular note, the 9-pound horse artillery can be an absolute monster of a unit. Being able to move to speed, it is able to quickly move to wherever it needs to, set up, and start blasting right away. 
This gives it a lot of power and makes it a very high value unit, albeit one that costs, it, it is the most expensive unit in the game. Also, I just want to mention that even though the 12 pound field howitzer has cumbersome, efficiency can still be useful. The reason being is that you can move this howitzer into place and then set it up on the same turn so the next turn it can shoot. Cumbersome only stops units from shooting or moving. It can't do both in a turn, but it could move twice. So that means that you are able to utilize this efficiency to make this howitzer more responsive than other ones, which would take two turns to set up before they can actually shoot. In terms of builds, the British are pretty much always going to have a small army. There's just no way around it. And unless you are literally going to spam Hussars, you're never going to have a very large army with the British. So instead, you need to make sure to incorporate a lot of quality, but also try to bulk out your numbers where possible. This first build focuses a lot on simply including a well-rounded composition. Your foot guard you have a foot guard, an anchor in the Highlanders, and then a mix of line and light infantry, giving you a total of six infantry. And then you have remaining funds to funnel into something like a field artillery, a dragoon, or like a light dragoons. If you go with some of this stuff, you can also fit in more line, allowing you a little bit more flexibility in terms of your lines having more durability. And you can kind of finagle this around to get it as you want. Another build is incorporating a lot of elite units in favor of using some cheap units. By incorporating two rifles, we save enough money that we can actually go with a heavy artillery piece and double foot guards. A build like this is going to rely very heavily on the foot guards and artillery to carry the battle, but you still do have a decent amount of seven units. That's really kind of the higher end of what you can do with the British, just because of the sheer cost of its units. Another option also is literally just kind of spam line infantry. This may not seem like it would work, but you'd actually be surprised because... This gives you the greatest number of infantry you can get, getting a total of 7 infantry alongside a cavalry unit, more than you would really get with any other unit. They all have rifles, they all have range drill, and then you have something like a dragoon to fill the roster out with. I believe, though, that generally the best ways are to always try to incorporate some sort of heavy tier unit, so either foot guards and highlanders some sort of artillery piece, or at least a Dragoon, just because you want something with either efficiency or very, very durable in order to really give you that strong elite feeling. But now, let's go and jump over to the late period, where Britain undergoes a couple different changes that can affect how they play. The late period actually adds a pretty large amount of different units to every tab in the British roster. And as such, Britain can really start to play around with a variety of other things. In terms of new units, you start off with the Rifle Volunteers. They are 4 health, 2 cohesion light infantry with skirmishing, range drill, and breakable. These guys are the cheapest infantry available to the British, but at the same time, they suffer from being pretty much paper tigers. They have a lot of damage they can potentially dish out, but they also die to pretty much anything. Once they get shot one time, their cohesion is practically gone, they start taking damage from breakable, and they generally will die if they get shot again. It's a unit you have to play very carefully with. But it can help the British army to feel a bit more like a bulk nation. And can one or two of them, for, can ver for very cheap, bulk out your army. Another unit is the Sepoy Infantry. The Sepoy Infantry are actually quite nice because they are one of the few infantry that doesn't have range drill, but yet still retain a solid 6 health and 4 cohesion. They do have Rugged also, which gives them a little bit more utility. 
But really the biggest thing is just that they are able to just be essentially 30 points cheaper than regular line infantry. Which actually makes the Sepoy very useful. As similar to the rifle volunteers, these guys can work very well as ways to bulk out your numbers and make it so Britain is not so outnumbered in a battle. Another new unit comes in the form of lifeguards. A heavy cavalry with 6 health and 5 cohesion that has shock and melee drill. It's a very, very powerful uh, heavy cavalry for getting into melee and is Britain's single best melee unit. There honestly isn't a whole lot wrong with the lifeguards. They are a little bit, they are overall cheaper than something like the Dragoon Guards and are better in melee, but without range drill or efficiency, they are somewhat one note however if you do feel the need that you're going to need something to assault say a town or a key position lifeguards are probably one of the best options britain has then you have gatling guns which are very very powerful artillery pieces although they have a low range of two with breach loading and anti-personnel and no cumbersome they can move quickly and hit very very hard their suppression means that they can very quickly shred enemy units, and although you have to play carefully with them, they are actually aren't that expensive in comparison to most of their other units, so they actually can serve quite well. And then you also have 12-pound Armstrong guns, a modern artillery piece. Modern artillery is always very, very powerful, and although this has cumbersome and breech loading and nothing else, 5 range is very, very far, and it can hit very hard either suppressing multiple units every turn or doing stuff like blasting a unit together to completely break its cohesion and allowing other units to follow up and kill it. It's the most expensive unit in Britain's army, but it can do a lot of work. In terms of build, Britain is able to be a little more flexible and go a little wider thanks to the addition of stuff like Sepoys and the Rifle Volunteers. This first build is an all-infantry build that is essentially just putting emphasis on the foot guards to really carry your combat potential, since otherwise you're not going to have a lot of outstanding units. But they are bulky. You do have a lot of units in this, having a total of 8 units, or 9 units actually, in this roster, which is a good amount for Britain. Britain doesn't really get that high of a unit count on average and your units are still high quality the foot guards are the obvious standout ones but you still have some line units you have rifles and then the sepoys and the rifle volunteers help to round out the roster it overall gives your nation a well-rounded feeling and you naturally also have a lot of rugged which allows you to be very sneaky in terms of actually being really strong in flanks and just fighting in rugged terrain Another build is one that is going more so all in on the quality, so committing very hard to just kind of maximizing the amount of units that you are pretty much condensing the power as much as possible. Double foot guards and a Highlander gives you a lot of heavy infantry to work with, and this is backed up by the very, very powerful Armstrong gun. We then utilize the good old reliable Sepoy infantry to bulk out our numbers and finish it off with something like a Hussar in order to have a fast moving unit that can kind of fill a couple different roles. You could also fit a rifle volunteer in if you wanted a little more range drill. This build is, I would say... A lot more high risk, but it could be effective if you're looking to be all about quality rather than quantity. On specific maps that have stuff like choke points, this could be an extremely powerful setup. But if you're running against a nation like, say, Russia or the Ottomans that can swarm you, this build could very quickly find itself overwhelmed and just murdered through sheer weight of enemy numbers. But it could be a realistic option. You could also cut the heavy artillery and go with something more reasonable, say something like a Dragoon Guards and then fitting in something like a British Line Infantry. Something like this could be a little more effective, giving you a little bit more in terms of numbers, but you overall have to kind of play around and find the builds. 
In general, I really suggest bringing at least one foot guard with rifled breech loaders. It's such a powerful infantry unit that every British army will get better for utilizing it. On top of that, I would also suggest always trying to see if you could save money with the Sepoy infantry. Because being so cheap, they are very, very cost effective and can bulk out your numbers very nicely, even if they're not the most impressive unit. And that is the end of my United Kingdom guide. The British are definitely one of the hardest factions to play in the game because it is a faction that is outnumbered in pretty much any match it goes into, requiring it to almost always take positive trades to actually come out on top. Its units are very powerful. Range drills are a very powerful perk, but it is a nation that can take a lot of skill in order to utilize effectively. Hopefully this guide has shown you some tips and tricks and given you some basic idea for builds, giving you a decent chance to perform well with it. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. As mentioned earlier, the video hat, there is going to be a guide like this for every single nation. I've already done about four nations and now we are about halfway done with the roster. And next up, we're going to take a very different direction than the United Kingdom. And instead, we're going to be heading to the old lands of the Russian Empire. So make sure to stay around for that. But otherwise, I want to thank you all so much for watching and have a good day.